Hey filmmakers, Shonda here. In this video, we're going to show you how to make the Ghostbuster Proton Beam effect inside of Premiere Pro. It's actually quite easy and of course with Ghostbuster Afterlife coming out really soon and also being uh, Halloween really soon, probably a lot of people would dress up as a Ghostbuster and want to add their uh, yeah, effect when they're using the Proton Beam or the Proton Pack. So we're now inside of Premiere Pro, we're gonna go to our pen tool here, hold it in and press the rectangle tool. Gonna draw a line here. So this thickness is about right. And I'm gonna make sure it's actually going from all the way from one side to the other. Like that. And then Put it, make sure it's in the middle here. So now we go to effects control and add the color. So the first color I change is the fill to a yellow. Then the stroke, stroke we want this to be orange. Like this, and we'll add a thickness like this. And maybe actually this could be a little bit thinner like that. Okay. So we have this going on. We're gonna close this down here. And we're gonna duplicate this shape. Control or Command C and V. So we have two of these. Now we go to effects and we're gonna search for all the effects that we need. The first one is Gaussian Blur. Drag that onto the clip. Second one is lightning. And the third one is wave warp. Okay, so that is all the effects that we need for now. So first what we do is we're gonna move the Gaussian blur up one. So this is going to add like the glow around the beam. Let's actually turn off lightning for now and wave warp so we can see that. So at Gaussian Blur, we're just gonna add blurriness until we see like a nice uh, yeah, glow happening. So something like this, so we get like a nice glow around it, kind of like a neon effect. So this is also a quick and simple way to do a neon effect. And now we go to lightning, we turn that on. And we select lightning and we see like these two globes, right? So these are where the starting point is. But um, yeah, with the blur effect, it kind of move them out of place. So you kind of need to manually move it into like the correct position so you see the lines where the lightning actually hits that is correctly now so it's not like the these circles need to be in the middle but where the lightning is where it ends it needs to be in the middle of the beam so it has like a more of that it follows it so now we're gonna change a few things of the lightning segments. We're gonna change this to 25. So we have like more lightning going on. We're gonna change the amplitude to like five. So it doesn't overly uh, extend too far out. Can change the segments to 10. So we have like more like interesting branching going on. And we're going to change the width here to 15. So we have like a little bit more pronounced lightning going on. So there. Actually, maybe the branch segments not that much. We need to 6. Like that. So we have like nice lightning going on. Maybe it's actually going a little bit too fast. And we're going to want to change the speed of this to like 3. Oh, 
that's too slow. Six. Like that. Nice lightning going on. Maybe the thickness we can change a little bit more to 20. So it's even more pronounced. That looks better. And now we have that. We can go to wave warp. So wave warp will finally add like that wavy effect. So we're gonna change the wave height to 80 and change the width here to 300. So we have this nice wave going on. It's a little bit on the slow side, so we're gonna change this to two. So it's much faster. However, it's a bit too constant of a wave so we're gonna duplicate this wave warp so we have like a more um, yeah non-constant effect going on so we click wave warp then command C command V so we duplicate it this duplicated one we're gonna change this wave width to 650 already gives it like different effect going on I'm gonna change the wave speed a little bit on this one to 0.5 so it's an offset wave speed so I have this going on so we have like a more irregular wave going on and if you, if you want to have it even more irregular you could do a third one so it's like even more pronounced that it's irregular and that is this effect and of course you can make it bigger or more higher waves this one we could do like 90 or like 100 so one thing we now see on this side is going up and down like it changes position quite a lot so we're gonna alter that so it's easier to um, lock it to like a position so for example here we see it locked here to this uh, yeah proton ray so we can see it's one from one spot so instead that like, you have to really do something difficult to move it to keep it in place we can actually pin it to a place so we go to wave warp here we have pinning we choose here pin left edge and also on the other one we choose here pin left edge now when we play this you can see this comes from just might have slight up and down move but it actually moves mostly from the same spot so now to actually add on top of like an image so move this under it. Have this load. So when we move this on top of an image, of course, we want to place it correctly, but also have like the correct look. So we go to blend mode and we actually change this blend mode to screen, which already gives it a uh, yeah more correct look to it and then inside of effect actually search for basic 3d 
So with basic 3D, we can put this ray inside of like more of a perspective. So it's not like just on a flat plane. So we can swivel it a bit. So it more, looks more like shooting towards the camera. And just at motion, we can just move it in position. This move it down and also rotate it. Just like this, have it from there. So one thing you might see it's not fully connected to this spot. So one thing we can hide it with is a lens flare. However, for lens flare you need to open a new oh, need to open a new black video here at your projects. Press OK. Put this on top of here and then add the lens flare effect. So in your FX control, lens flare. Check this onto the video. And then FX control, change blend mode to screen. Because the reason is if you add the lens flare directly onto the yeah, beam itself, it won't actually show like all the rest of the effects just only lens flare or it just doesn't show the lens flare at all so change the lens type to 105 prime which i find the best looking because the other one has like a red glow and we just move it over the spot so we have like a whole lens flare covering that whole ugly part so we have this now going on. And that was how to make the Ghostbuster Proton Beam. Uh, hope you found this a very useful tutorial. And yeah, hope to see you guys make up uh, very interesting Ghostbuster videos for Halloween this year. And especially with uh, Ghostbuster Afterlife coming up. Hope you guys will see that movie because that one looks quite interesting. So if you have any questions or any other effects you want me to try and make inside of Premiere Pro, please comment it in the comment section here below. Make sure to share, like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.